starting out with what we already know. Um, as you already know, Venus has a smothering atmosphere. It's extremely thick and massive, high pressure compared to Earth's atmosphere. Um, more specifically, it's 88 times the pressure of Earth's atmosphere. The surface temperature of Venus is not any kinder than that. It's about 750 Kelvin. That's about the same temperature as the hot side of Mercury. Uh, this is hot enough to melt lead. And that way, that's because, or sorry, that's why the probes that we've sent to Venus on the past have only survived for short periods of time. Um, not only this, but its atmosphere also contains clouds made of sulfuric acid. And so even for a lander to get to the surface of Mercury, it has to pass through basically this sulfuric acid bath in order to get there. Um, and then once you're on the surface, it's hot and dry and there's hardly a breeze. So I would not like to go to Venus. It sounds like a very bad place. Um, and it's really hard to do science on the surface like we can do on Mars because of these conditions. Um, we've talked about the atmospheres of Venus, Earth, and Mars already. Um, but just to remind you, they started out with primary atmospheres containing hydrogen and helium. Because these are such um, light molecules, they escaped to space quickly. Um, the surfaces of the planets were also warmer at that time. And since then, they have cooled. Their secondary atmospheres were created from volcanic outgassing. And then the secondary atmospheres of Venus, Mars, and Earth uh, evolved and changed over time. Today, this is what we see. Uh, to remind you, Venus has a high percentage of CO2 in its atmosphere compared to Earth. Um, it has uh, quite a bit of nitrogen, and then everything else is basically trace amounts. So out of the secondary gases that were in Venus's atmosphere, um, I've calculated their average speed at Venus's surface temperature, and those are listed next to them. The escape velocity is 10.4 kilometers per second. So remembering our rule of six, which one of these gases would have been most likely to escape? All right. So I'm seeing the most votes for one and five. So either water or none of these gases. Um, I agree. I'll, of these gases, water has the highest average speed, and so it would be most likely to escape. But in fact, if I use that rule of six, six times water's average speed would only be six kilometers per second. That's less than, than the escape velocity. So you don't really expect for any of these gases to escape. All right, so looking at Venus's atmosphere and how it evolved over time, um, we see that it started out with a lot of water in its secondary atmosphere, 60% water. So where did it all go? Well, for the water in particular, um, Venus is closer to the sun, so it's hotter. And it also receives more ultraviolet light from the sun than the Earth does. The water actually dissociated. And what we mean by that is water that was in the atmosphere absorbed ultraviolet light and got broken apart into what we call hydroxide. That's an oxygen connected to hydrogen and then a free hydrogen. So the ultraviolet light is effectively capable of breaking one of those hydrogen bonds and releasing one of those uh, hydrogen atoms from the water molecule. The hydrogen atom, uh, this is really light. And so it escapes really easily because it's so light. The hydroxide too is um, lighter than before, and now it can do other things. It can combine chemically with other molecules in the atmosphere and also on the surface. And so the hydroxide doesn't form more water. It gets stuck in other ways. So as the water dissociated, um, it was basically broken apart and could not be put back together again. So the water is dissociated and most of it escapes for that reason. So it's important to realize it's not like the water vapor itself was um, leaving the atmosphere. Remember, we saw a few slides back that um, we would not expect for um, Venus's water to escape the atmosphere. But this dissociation process allowed just the hydrogen to escape. OK, the carbon dioxide, on the other hand, that survived. Um, the sulfur dioxide became sulfuric acid, 
um, sulfur dioxide plus water creates sulfuric acid. So any of the remaining atmospheric water had created sulfuric acid, which is now uh, what Venus's clouds are made of. The nitrogen survived mostly, and so did the noble gases. So um, what do I mean by survived mostly? Well, if we look at the mass of nitrogen and look at the average speed of nitrogen on Venus and on Earth, we see that it's a little higher than Venus. Um, so some of the nitrogen at the very high end of that speed distribution is able to escape, but most of it survived. Um, similarly, the noble gases mostly survived and for similar reasons. Some of them are moving quite quickly on Venus due to its high surface temperature. And so some of the very fastest gases can escape, um, but for the most part, Venus was able to hold on to those over its lifetime. So that's where the atmosphere of Venus is today, mostly CO2, no more water to uh, moderate its greenhouse effect to act as a negative feedback loop in those cycles. And so instead we get a hellscape. 